Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Crawl Space Program 1.2. In this episode I've come up with another horrible idea of how to launch stuff into space. And in this case it is a flyback booster. There are numerous reasons why this is a bad idea but uh, well here we are. And the way this works is I've got an inner stage here and so whatever payload we have will eventually attach up here and we'll have a fairing around it and then when the payload goes off uh, this won't get all the way to orbit there'll be a second stage and I'll talk about that but uh, for now you can see that there'll be a payload fairing in order to uh, it's an inner stage fairing to match with the second stage and so we have that node in front of us but I've tried to have this sort of conic front end in order to avoid too much uh, drag on the way back and of course we have a reaction wheel there. Right now this is unfueled except for some liquid fuel in the tank at the bottom. About half a tank of that. And that is because we have a Panther. That is the best jet engine we have right now I believe. Though uh, we've got a lot of these. Um, yeah I think, I mean it depends on how you look at it which one is best. Of course we've got the Goliath as well but that's a sort of different form factor, so let's hold off on that. And yeah, there's also all these uh, interesting ones that use carbonite, but I'm not too sure about that. We could do something really fancy. We've got these turbo props. We've got these, uh, well, whatever these are, more carbonite engines. And so this one's liquid fuel. But yeah, that... Um, I don't know how those work just yet, so let's let's wait on that. So other features, well we've got additional tanks just for, uh, well mainly it was actually to space out the wheels and also to uh, have a place to put other things like uh, like that, but actually that's attached to the main body because of symmetry. Um, but yeah, we've got a lifting surface down here, but mainly this is based on these small folding wings. I've added tweak scale to these wings, though I don't know if that's going to work right, because tweak scale sure didn't come with those wings, and uh, they're like that. And you go, well that's a wing pretty far in the back, isn't it? Well, all of our mass is in the back. You can see this is our center of mass, and right now this is our center of lift. And we've got canards there. I don't know how much lift these small folding wings actually give or whether tweak scale actually increased the lift at all. So those are interesting questions for us. Also just the sheer controllability of it is a question mark. But you gotta admit it's an intriguing idea. On the back of course uh, beside the Panthers we have four swivels and four Reliance and those will be the launch engines. So yeah well and there's no particular reason to believe that this should have to take off from a runway but I think we should try and see if it can take off from a runway so let me unfurl those again it's empty and we'll try and flight test it using the panther engine and well good thing we have a huge budget alright here we go oh it looks like our back wheels might be a little bit too far forward, but it's still down, so that's all right. Okay, SAS on, and maybe the reaction wheel would have been able to push it down anyway. Okay, throttle up, uh, staging needs to be switched around. I have no idea about the lift characteristics of these ring wings right now. They are pretty big, you have to say, um, and they're well positioned. So hopefully they're going to give a lot of lift, but who knows. I don't know what the takeoff speed is going to be, or what, well, who knows, Let's, or if there might be one or not. Let's see. We've got the intakes here. They seem to provide enough, I think. It's funny, I thought intake atmosphere had no longer been... Uh, resource that was displayed but it's definitely showing up okay well I'll try and pull up gingerly oh it definitely won't, it definitely does not mind the whole lift idea uh, but I don't want to scrape the tail it's going up at 50 meters per second so it's got a lot of lift when it's empty right this has no fuel in it except for that little bit in the back and we are not gaining velocity oh shoot we stalled 
Ah. Okay, that wasn't very good. Hmm, so we can take off on the ground, but then if we tilt up too much, we stall. Uh, come on, brakes. We lost all the engines. That's fantastic. All right, well, that is what the budget is for. I think that's a pretty interesting start. I mean, I don't know what we're going to prove by doing a test flight like this. We just wanted to see whether it could fly, and tentatively, that's not too bad. Uh, what we really need to do is launch it at high velocity and see if it can come back. So let's recover vessel. Okay, no science apparently gained from that. 28,000 funds returned. That's something at least. Could have been worse. So let's go to VAB. Okay, so the first mission for this particular flyback booster is going to be launching a station viewing module to satisfy this build new orbital station around Kerbin uh, contract. Uh, facility supporting five Kerbals. And we can see, whoa, um, hmm. It's a good point. Do we want Valentina in there? Hmm. I need to put some sort of control module on the station if we want to avoid Valentina. This here is actually a structural element that's supposed to simulate crew going, uh, so that's like a crew tube. But, and these are little ventral tanks. But I guess I'll obstruct that by putting a controller there just so that we don't have to send this up crude. This is a test launch after all. I wish we had the the controller that fit 1.25 meters a little bit better without having to put batteries around. Uh, but I guess that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so Oh, I forgot about antenna. We need an antenna. And uh, not science anymore. I guess any old antenna would do. This is definitely not like the final form of the station. We want to send up the MKS modules, the colonization modules, but those are more expensive and dodgier to put on a launch like this. So I think we're all right, and I've got auto strutting in, involved in the key parts. Okay, so no more Valentina in there. Right, so the second stage, which will actually bring this to orbit, is a poodle. But you can see we, we've got landing struts, we've got the air brakes, we've got to try and bring it back down as well. It's got a controller and an SAS unit in there. No RCS. So it's just going to have to use the SAS unit, the reaction wheel, to do the things. After that is the flyback booster. I don't know how much of this I can actually test. You know, I, I don't think I can handle the poodle and handle the flyback booster. What would be interesting is, and I'll unlock this tank. I had locked it trying to do delta V calculations, but... Um, I'm not confident that this is showing me anything like the correct Delta V, so that's our situation. And staging in general is all over the place. So yeah, uh, maybe we could figure out whether stage recovery can, can actually recover it, which would be important because I don't want to, even if we test flying it back, I don't want to have to do it manually each time or anything. All right, well, here we are, and it doesn't look too much different from a normal rocket from a distance, but you can vaguely see some questionable placement of aerodynamic surfaces if you get a little bit closer. All right, throttles up, SAS is on, and launch. I strongly doubt Smart ASS is going to be happy with this, so I'll just take care of it. Be very careful with this. It's uh, it's got some wiggle to it. No big surprise there. 
I don't know if it needs to do a boost back or not. Maybe. Well, I think I'll reserve 10 seconds of fuel to do a boost back. So, stop, set, and ignition. And fairness set. First priority is to get the payload out to orbit. So, it might be up to stage recovery to get that. But maybe we should launch a dummy payload to uh, see whether we can recover the first stage properly. But this time we'll at least get to see whether we can recover this stage properly, that's for sure. I'm curious about the placement of the air brakes and what that might do. Might be a bad placement right there. Also the heat shielding situation is a little bit off. There's a chance we might lose the landing struts. I probably should have put some better antennae on this, come to think of it. Um, okay, we've got a stage recovery thing, and stage recovery is at least happy with the first stage. I mean, it's got all the liquid fuel in it, so it's got a lot of delta V. Propulsive landing, it says. Terminal velocity of 4. Check SR flight GUI for information about the amount of propellant consumed. Mm, 512 units of liquid fuel. So, it did, but uh, it didn't land at the KSC. It landed 139 kilometers away. So it basically splashed out. Well, it could have made it to that peninsula, the eastern peninsula. But uh, yeah, I think it splashed down, which is not the intention. And it used 512 units of liquid fuel using the jet engine. Okay. But anyway, at least we got it back. Okay, well, I don't know, uh, 371 meters per second, but that's with the payload, so let's make sure everything's alright with it. Extend solar panels. It doesn't have a full load of uh, supplies, by the way. It's only one quarter filled with supplies. That's alright. I think we're ready. Separation. And build new orbital, orbital station around Kerbin is fulfilled. Yep. Okay. So now we have 1,121, which is good. And for now we have communications, but I don't know how long that's going to last. But let's try and go to our normal deorbit location and proceed from there. I think 27 kilometers. We'll try. Maybe 30, because since we have the air brakes, maybe 30 will be a little bit better. Alright, back down and go with this. We have to put a similar station into orbit around the moon, but I meant that as an addition to our existing station. And then after that, a surface outpost on Minmus that has the ability to collect some science data would be the next thing to do. Well, let's not have the air brakes out just... Well, once we hit the atmosphere proper, we want the air brakes out ahead of time. So the sudden deployment of them doesn't, like, flip us around or anything. Maybe I should just let it coast through, and then once I regain connection to it, we can, uh, we can deploy the air brakes and see. I don't think it really needs the air brakes, frankly. We have the barest loss of connection right now. I mean, we haven't actually lost connection. Signal quality is just going down. Okay, now we've lost connection. 39 kilometers. But that depends on what velocity you approach the atmosphere at, of course. 39 kilometers if you're coming in from low carbon orbit. Got some overheating on the engine itself. Well, that's... I'm using the engine as a heat shield, so... No big surprise there. Well, it looks like we're gonna be landing short, even though I went with 30 kilometers. Used to be that 30 kilometers would get you to KSC from a 100 kilometer apoapsis. 
but that's not the case anymore, which means the atmosphere is thicker than it used to be when I made those tests. We now have connection. Feels like the reaction wheel is more than enough. Don't need any sort of Werner engines to uh, control it. Okay, well, um, this engine is not as powerful at sea level, obviously. I forgot to take that into account. You can see our stage delta V at sea level is horrible, actually. So, um... I might have to reconsider that factor. The suicide burn countdown is apparently also not quite accurate right now. Um, at least it told me to suicide... well, anyway, I was a little bit early. Well, that's a disappointment. But maybe the addition of, like, the twitch engines to it, instead of just having the poodle do the descent burn, might be advisable. Yeah. Okay, anyway, back to the VAB. Alright, so I've replaced both the payload and the second stage with uh, procedural tanks with the same mass, and that's because that's the cheapest way to go as far as I could tell. I could really use some way of replacing the payloads with some sort of dummy payload that's cheaper than fuel, because fuel is pretty expensive in uh, stockish Kerbal. I mean, well, the tanks are at least. So just uh, sort of lead weight would be much better. Of course, this changes the aerodynamics a bit, so that's a bit of a difference. But we're really interested in bringing this back. Now, the payload that we had before wasn't intended to be the absolute maximum payload that this thing could lift. But that's good because that means that the launcher will get further out than uh, with the maximum payload and that makes it more difficult to bring it back. So this is a good way to go. And in fact, a light payload is exactly what you want to test it with. So anyway, let's bring it out to the launch pad and see how it works. All right, here we go. Test flight is already okay with it. The question is whether it's really okay. All right, everything seems to be in order and launch. Oh, uh, it's upside down from where it was before. That's interesting. I had the other way around. Or at least, uh, oh, we're controlling from a different part than last time, maybe. Well, it's not quite the same trajectory. I'm a bit flatter. I think that'll be alright. We will reserve 10 seconds left in order to do some sort of boost back. I doubt that that's enough of a boost back, but it's a start. We should probably have gone higher. Okay, and set. And let's try and turn around. Well, looks like we can. Okay, here we go. 660 meters per second. That way. Okay, that's the end of that fuel. We only have liquid fuel left, which means time for the jet engine, though we could wait until we get into the atmosphere, of course. Maybe I should point towards prograde and turn around. That's probably a safer maneuver than what I've got right now. Okay, we want to present a, well, as much of a flat surface going down as possible to get drag. That's some serious control deflection on those wings. That's pretty good. Well, okay. It's something. It doesn't show as pitch over here, though. It says deploy extended. Oh. Oh, so that's what toggle deploy is. It's those things. 
Hmm. Deployed right now. Oh shoot, it's flipping. Um, which way are you flipping? Okay, we can run the engines. I think. I know I should be in chase view, but I think it would be a little bit dizzying. So now we've got an inconvenient sort of orientation. I'm gonna have to push down as much as possible. But I don't feel like it's gonna cooperate. This might have been the not the right tact. I should have probably gone in nose first instead of doing it this way. Oh no. We're going down fast. Oh, oh come on. Come on. No. No, come on. We yeah. out. Yeah, like that, sort of, maybe, uh, upside down, right side up, whatever, just horizontal, please. Oh. No, not straight up or straight down, just, okay, straight down is good, uh, straight down is fine, just, yes, 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 more of that, yes. Ooh, but can it fly that though now? We saw how it stalled out. No, it's losing speed. It needs more jets than what we've got right now. It's eventually going to run out, so I'm gonna have to splash down with it. There's no way we can get back home. We're too far out. So it looks like I'm gonna end up doing basically what uh, Stage Recovery did. Okay. No, no, not up, down still. No, no, not up. Oh, crud. Now it's stalled. Well, I didn't do that very well. Well, let's recover the bits that we have left. Alright, and now for something completely different. We're going to launch the SVM, the Station Viewing Module, to the moon. And it'll get itself to the moon. It's got enough Delta V with these added tanks here. It's got 1,417. But we're going to launch it on a semi-new launcher. Uh, you might recognize the core as I tried to land it uh, in the previous episode. But I've replaced the engine. The engine is no longer the mainsail. It is the skipper and instead we have two mainsail boosters on the side and according to stage recovery those can be recovered for 100% of their remaining value with the parachutes on the side you see there uh, provided that they don't knock into each other and we get farther enough away from them so that we are not in physics range so I mean at least that's what people have told me was the problem with the boosters last time and these should get out quite a uh, ways away now, the trick here is, of course, we've got this huge tank here feeding a very low thrust engine, and then we've got the two high thrust engines on the boosters. So, well, that means that instead of the normal thing with boosters, which is if you want, you feed asparagus in from the boosters in, we're actually feeding from the center tank out to the boosters, and so we're going to have to shut down the mainsails uh, like this. And so we're going to shut down and um, and then stage so that'll be fine so yeah that'll be interesting and so I've called this saltless because first of all it's sort of like a Soyuz with the boosters the shape of the boosters is sort of Soyuz-ish but the idea of having the boosters being fed from the main tank is Atlas so I combined the words Soyuz and Atlas and came up with saltless uh, which which is appropriate, hopefully. Uh, hopefully there is a limited amount of salt involved in this particular launch, we will see. So that is the idea, and we will hope that it's pretty expensive, this launch. We're, we're using a lot of money here, but hopefully this can get us our contract fulfilled over at the moon. Well, I'll have called it Saltless 1-2 because 
we might create a more complicated system expanding out from this with uh, multiple skippers and multiple boosters. So for instance, having four main cell boosters would be saltless 1-4 and uh, having, uh, let's say, a cluster of four skippers at the center for a really big rocket and then eight main sails would be saltless 4-8. So that sort of thing, uh, inspired sort of the uh, by the way I have named rockets in my Realism Overhaul series with the Nikos in that particular series. So, well, here we go. SAS on, throttle this up, and launch. of power but I have to figure out when it's appropriate to switch to the skipper we're past the speed of sound and going through max Q okay well I am shutting down the main sails and letting them go off they go cleanly we have two minutes to apoapsis, and I think that should be enough time for this engine to do its thing. And we have to bring this back too, don't forget. Fairing set. We've got oodles of Delta V left. So that means heavier payloads are a possibility, but that's not really a challenge. This was not that big to begin with. This should be able to carry much heavier things. But that's good. It'll make uh, recovery of this stage marginally easier. We got a message here. Flyback booster test debris. Well, obviously that wasn't going to survive. Okay, well, we can actually coast to Apoapsis, which means that we actually um, kept the main sails for longer than we had to. By the way, there shouldn't be any fuel left in the main sail pods because uh, those drain first. So uh, actually, this was uh, sucking in uh, fuel from the main sail pods first, and only then did we start sucking in fuel uh, using fuel from here. Okay, 110 by 99, let's say. I've got 1,451 meters per second, and it's more than that once we let go of the payload. I could give it a bit of a helper boost to start on its way to the moon. So yeah, let's go to this apoapsis here and boost up our periapsis a bit to help the payload out. And then we'll bring that back in before doing anything else. It looks like the boosters were recovered. Uh, a little bit higher velocity than we thought they would be. So we didn't get as much of a recovery value as we would have liked. But it still worked. So that's good. Now we can't loiter too much because of electric charge. Okay, we'll uh, give it an extra 200 meters per second boost. Okay, we'll say that that's good enough. Let's make sure all of its stuff is activated first. So... Okay, and... Well, we won't do staging, we'll just uh, decouple node here. Okay. Hmm. The center of the camera is a little bit forward. And RCS works fine. Okay, it is ready to go. But... Well, let's get it. Let's uh, see if we can get its encounter with the moon right now. Now we do have to get into that polar orbit to match our existing station, so that's a trick. Well, that just costs more. Okay, let's go. Well, 
Let's ignite the engines. There we go. Oh, uh, these could take a while. Oh, I, I seem to have lost my docking port lights. Or maybe they're covered up by these tanks. Okay, that's a pretty good approach to the moon. And we'll have to fix its approach to the station once we get over there. Or at least that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, what we can do is add an alarm just so we won't forget that this is on its way for the SOI change. Okay, now back to our our first stage which we need to recover. Alright, here we go again. Trying to recover vessels. Um... I need to bring that apoapsis down, I think, if I have any chance of, if I want to have any chance of predicting where it is going to land. So last time we did a hundred kilometers, now the drag's going to be different, but we did a hundred kilometer orbit and set it to a 30 kilometer periapsis and ended up short. Way short, in fact. So this time we're going to be a little bit higher, uh, 110 we'll call it, and I'll circularize at 110 and we'll go with uh, 32 and we'll see how that works. We do have air brakes if we need to slow down if we overshoot but yeah every version of KSP is different. I once had all the numbers down for this sort of thing and when I say once it might have been 0 0.24 0 0.25 so it's been a while but uh, I think those who probably have worked for 0 0.90 as well, I don't think they changed the atmosphere in between. But since then they've been on a atmosphere alteration thing. Okay, I guess uh, 115 by 113. Let's see how that works. So if we go... I always pick the same rough location to start my retro. That's at least keeping things consistent, and that's opposite Kerbin from the Eastern Peninsula. So right here, there's the Eastern Peninsula, and we're over there. So here we can do our retro. And we're substantially higher than last time this time, so maybe I'll just go with 30 kilometers. And let's see if it works from 115, because because it's steeper, it's not passing through the atmosphere for quite as long. And therefore, uh, if you were landing shorter before, if you start from a higher altitude, you will go further. Not too sure that made any sense. Now the downside to having a higher apoapsis like this is that we're going to encounter more heat. So I don't know how the landing legs will take it or the rest of the parts for that matter. So the assumption is below 40 kilometers I'm not going to be able to do anything with it so I'll have to decide whether I want air brakes out before that. I think I do looking at it. it looks like uh, we're going to be overshooting. I could use our substantial delta V to stop that. But let's just try air brakes starting at 50 kilometers. We've got uh, the beginnings of heat here. I don't even know if the air brakes will survive the heat. There's also the possibility of using engine thrust. And I think I might need it. So I'm going to use it while we still have connection. I don't know. Could have led to us crashing into mountains. Could still be on a path for ocean. Not sure. Well, the air brakes are definitely overheating, and we've lost communication at 42 kilometers this time. I'm not sensing a lot of drag from the air brakes. Yep. I was thinking the air brakes would give us a lot more drag than they're doing.
Now, when do we get communication back is something I didn't really make note of before. Oh, I suppose I should try throttling to see if the communication really is lost. Yes, it is. Just checking. Okay, the air brakes are really on the verge of getting blown up here. And this thing isn't slowing down at all. Which is sort of surprising to me. Well, they go the air brakes, but they were no use. Of, well, we've got one left. That's a whole lot of help. Okay, we have connection. Might as well retract that air brake. Okay, I'm sick of this. Ah, I go halfway around the world at this rate. Still like a bullet, I mean, really. Whole lot of fuel. I mean, maybe I should have just aimed for the Eastern Peninsula. We could have probably gotten there if I didn't do that burn. Jeez. Well, we've lost communication again. That's not helpful. Okay, we've gained communication again. That's helpful. But I don't know how long we're going to keep communication. Another lost one. This is pretty ridiculous. I mean, we we brought that thing down with the mainsail at the bottom, and it was pretty darn draggy. Put the skipper on the bottom, and it sailed right through the atmosphere, a thick part of the atmosphere too. I mean, we were pretty low, and it still. Uh, kept going like thousand meters per second. There's like no sense of terminal velocity. Hmm. That's quite a thing. All right. Well, uh, there's been somewhat of a disappointment. Let's go back to Space Center. I had a quit to menu option. It really wants to discourage me, huh? Okay. So next time we're going to take that module and try and rendezvous it with our existing station and dock it to it. But first we'll have to fulfill the contract, uh, make sure that it thinks it's a new station and all. And then we've got the Minmus base to set up and probably a whole lot of maintenance and making sure that our, our existing moon base is happy. Alright, so I think that's the way we're gonna go. I'm gonna try and not come up with a new launch system in the meantime but um, that that is a thing I tend to do. But yeah, anyway, we will try and get further along in the actual business of colonization. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.